Kia ora, and welcome to the CoreLogic Property Market Update for June 2021. It feels like for the first time in a while, we have a chance to breathe and take stock of where the market is at. Probably similar to those in the market actually, as many people bide their time and assess both their own and the market situation before acting in what has been quite the frenzied conditions for both buyers and sellers. We've previously noted the slight reduction in market activity off the back of tightened lending restrictions from the Reserve Bank, alongside concern about the government's housing policy announcement at the end of March. And now we're starting to understand how it's impacted property values. The short answer is not by much, yet. According to the CoreLogic House Price Index, we have seen a minor slowdown in the rate of growth in the market, with 2.2% growth over May, compared to 3.1% in April. This is in line with our expectations, and is most likely due to the return of the tightened LVR limits, requiring a larger deposit for investors. This requirement has reduced the number of buyers able to stretch their finances to the elevated level of prices we're now accustomed to, after watching the market growing by over 20% in the last year. But importantly, there have been plenty of other buyers who were previously unsuccessful to step into the breach and ensure that values remain firm. The CoreLogic Buy Classification Series illustrates this recent change in active buyers, with an investor's share of purchases dropping from their most recent peak of 41.0% in March, down to 36.6% in May 2021. Meanwhile, first home buyers have benefited from the reduced competition, and seeing their share of purchases lift from 21.1% to 24.6% over the same period. The other thing the trend of recent activity illustrates is what looks to be a clear rush to market by investors, getting in before the official reintroduction of the LVR limits, after they were first foreshadowed in early December last year. Demand for property has reduced since then, albeit probably due to ability rather than desire, and only enough to see the rate of value grow slow rather than drop. The second factor guarding against the drop in values is limited supply in the form of very few properties available for sale. That's not to say we don't have people listing their property, we do. Just not at a rate fast enough to keep up with sales, and certainly not enough to make up for the cumulative effect of strong sales volumes over a number of years. Moving forward, our expectation is for much of the same through winter. Reduced demand compared to the last year, but not dramatically so. And with immediate supply still constrained, we're likely to see a continued slowing of growth rather than a more dramatic drop in values or even a flattening out. In the past month, we have seen official house price forecasts from both the Treasury through the government budget and the Reserve Bank in their latest monetary policy statement. Both were notable for their forecasted sharp reduction in value growth over the next year. However, recent evidence suggests a much more tempered slowdown, with quarterly growth gradually reducing to roughly 1% by the end of the year. Consideration of future property values is firmly tied to the interest rate outlook and intertwined in that are inflation expectations. As part of the recent release of forecasts from the Reserve Bank came the OCR track, with the next move now likely to be up rather than down as it had been previously. There's no need to panic however, with the lift not expected anytime soon. Late 2022 is the schedule being earmarked as the earliest this might happen, but we're already starting to see this weigh on mortgage holders' minds, as fewer are fixing their mortgage at short-term rates. It's a minor shift as opposed to a giant swing, but does provide an insight into borrowers' expectations. Once interest rates do start to lift, any movement will likely be slow and steady, with the Reserve Bank reaffirming their view that the economy continues to require stimulation, and this includes low interest rates for an extended period of time. On the flip side, there are inflationary concerns putting pressure on interest rates to lift, so that is one thing to look out for in the short to medium term future. The other piece of news to await is the Finance Minister's response to the Reserve Bank's evaluation on the potential implementation of debt to income limits. The Reserve Bank has made it clear there would be a long lead into any introduction of DTI limits, and we don't expect them to need them right now, given the forecast growth reduction. However, the Reserve Bank have expressed a desire to have the option available, so we think the Minister will approve. Lastly today, it's worth noting the Government has released a discussion document on the design of the interest limitation rule and additional bright line rules with submissions due by 12 July. If you feel strongly about the changes and would like to have your say on the proposals, I'd highly recommend taking the opportunity to do so. Much like ourselves, the policymakers need to hear from those in the market, so now is your chance. For our take on what impact some of the proposed changes could have, and to stay across all the latest data and insights, be sure to subscribe to our weekly property market podcast. 
and regularly check the research tab at corelogic.co.nz. Mā te wā.